Welcome to the Roy Snar Show, entrepreneurship and giving back. Now, here's your host, Roy Snar. Welcome back to the Roy Snar Show. Today, I have a very special guest, very excited to be talking with him. He's going to drop some bombs and share some incredible knowledge with us. This is actually his studio. Okay, he owns this studio, owns studios all, all over the place and in Dallas. So we have one here locally in Austin. There's one in Dallas. I've been working with Jeff Crilly for quite some time now. In fact, a little over a year. And he is a PR legend. He's going to share his story, his journey, his path of entrepreneurship, and how he transitioned from the corporate world into owning his own amazing seven-figure business. Jeff, thank you so much for coming hey, on. Thank you. Well, it's an honor. And wow. And for me to be in my own studios as your guest yeah. is, is quite an honor. I'm, honestly, I'm the guy who's usually asking the questions, so it's weird when I'm the guest. Yeah. But it's, yeah, isn't this an amazing view? Oh, it's, yeah. awesome. it's I love it. It's great. Everybody I show the studio to, they're like, is that really the Capitol building or is that just like cut in? I'm like, no, that's really the Capitol <laughs> building of Texas. And we have the governor's mansion below. Isn't that amazing? Yes, yes. it's awesome. So blessed. So and blessed. the parking is nice and easy. So if you're anywhere local to Austin, you know it's an absolute travesty trying to park anywhere. So this is awesome. You just park right in, go right upstairs. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for the for the plug. <laughs> yeah, no problem at all. Shameless plug. Hey, it works out. But uh, you know, I would love for the audience to learn more about how you started this. Like, how? Why am I in your studio now and utilizing this space? How did you get here from sure. where you? You know, what's the what's the, your whole backstory? Basically? So, thank you. Um, I was a TV reporter for twenty five years. So, Lansing, Omaha, Minneapolis, Dallas, and I wrote a book in two thousand two. The book oh. was pretty much a PR book written okay. by a news guy saying, no, 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 here's how you get on the news. This is what you should say. This is what you should never say. Here's how you talk in sound bites. Here's how you write a press release that might not be thrown away. Oh. Uh, here's how you handle a negative story if the media shows up for the wrong reasons. And, and here's how you get to be a media darling where the media calls you up automatically. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this book in 2002, never intending to leave TV news. I was just going to make a little extra money, go around giving some speeches and I went on this blistering pace of 300 speeches a year for six straight years wow. in addition to my TV job. It was crazy. It was breakfast speech, lunch speech, go to work at Fox 4. Breakfast speech, lunch speech, go to work at Fox 4. I ended up selling 70,000 copies of this $10 book. And this business was born, Roy, because people kept trying to hire me. I'm signing books and they're either complaining about their PR firm, how much mm. money they're spending, how little they're getting, or they're saying, Jeff, it's a do-it-yourself book. I'll, I'll never do it myself. I, um, can I hire you? And I, I would say, no, I, I'm on TV. It's unethical. I can't take your money. And they would all say some version of, okay, well, if you ever get tired of TV news, I want to be your very first client. Wow. So in 2008, I got the courage to finally walk away from a nice uh, career in TV news into the great abyss of entrepreneurship, Whoa. which you know well, right? Yes, yes. And uh, I started this company in my home in, in 2008, laptop, cell phone, calling myself a PR firm. Perfect. Uh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've steadily grown. It's not like a overnight success. It's a one foot in front of the other uh, process. Yes. And I know you get up super early in the morning to get started. And my adv advice to any entrepreneur is, you know, you got to have the power of habit. It was a best-selling book written a few years ago by a wow. New York Times best-selling author. And it was basically, if you commit to doing something every single day to further your goals, whether that's losing weight, getting in shape, sure. yeah. or building a business, uh, you, you slow and steady does win the, win the race. So the most exciting thing that's happened in the last few years is this podcast division because uh, podcasting got super cool, as you know. Oh, yeah. Um, you have your own show, obviously, and so uh, you get it. Well, podcasting got really cool, but most CEOs, they don't want to be the tech. They want to be the talent. They want to yeah. just show up and interview people and leave. And so uh, our podcast division, our broadcast division, has really grown into now something like 150 different shows, wow. in including yours. That's amazing. So, yeah, I feel like uh, the most blessed man on the planet because I can't believe that no other entrepreneur thought to bring commercial television production to podcasting. Yeah. So as, as you look at all the podcasts that are on you know, YouTube right now, most of them look kind of homemade, right? Sure. It's sure. person at home with a webcam. And so for you to come in here to this beautiful building in downtown Austin, mm -hmm. interview me, and then leave knowing that Ziggy, shout out to Ziggy, yeah. uh, our producer, <laughs> he's going to do all the editing and uploading and tagging and just make it simple for you so you can go on with your day. Yeah, that's awesome. It, you know, I tried to do this at home myself, and I still have a little thing for like Zoom calls with clients or other agents, but the lighting and the camera setup, it's 
unless you live in this space, it's impossible to get it done. At least it was for me. It was very challenging trying to figure out how do I get this light to work? There's shadows on me. And if I wanted to create more leverage and have higher level guests on, such as yourself, thank you. If, if they wanted to come into my little tiny office or come to my house and hear the dog barking and the baby screaming, that's not going to give me a lot of leverage. But having a studio like this is absolutely amazing. I'm calling people now saying, hey, look, how about you come on to my show? It's in downtown Austin. We look over to Capitol Building. You can check it out on YouTube. Really? You'll have me on your show? That's way more powerful than saying, hey, let's hop on Zoom or StreamYard. You can actually have your own studio. And the best part to what you said, Ziggy is phenomenal. He does all the editing, the clips, and all that computer stuff that I'm not very good at, nor do I want to do it. He does it all to make us look like absolute rock stars. He does. Yeah, it's he's great. He's amazing. And he too is a tireless worker. So he's the, yeah. he, uh, when he was working in Dallas, uh, he was always the guy to come in early, open up the studios. Yep. If I ever asked him to stay late, um, it was always um, absolutely whatever, whatever needs to be done. So he's the perfect person to head up Austin. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. I've texted Ziggy in early morning, late at night. He's emailed me on Sundays. It's awesome to have that, you know, and if I could go back in time, the one thing I would tell myself and I would tell everybody right now is to do it, just actually do it. I was so reluctant to start my show. What am I going to talk about or where am I going to do it? All these excuses. And so now that we're actually doing it, it's so much fun yeah. and it's super easy. All we're doing is having a conversation. You're a great host, by the way. I mean, I, I, I came up through traditional broadcasting, and so you kind of learn habits in, in TV news. So mm. I think I still kind of talk like a TV news guy. Yeah, well, you're uh, really smooth. You, so. <laughs> well, well, thank you. But uh, I envy you in a way because you have this boyish excitement about you that's <laughs> that uh, hasn't gone through journalism school and, you know, learned, yeah. uh, you know, how to talk like an anchorman. You sure. just have a, you have a boyish excitement that is infectious. So you're an amazing host. Well, thank you. I yeah. really appreciate yeah, that. You bet. Yeah, you Thank you so much. And it, it's a learning curve because it's awkward at first. I mean, you just, you're staring into a camera. I remember the first couple of videos or TV appearances I did, it was on Zoom because this was back in 2020. They're like, just look at that little green dot in your computer. And I'm like, Ugh, this is awkward. I'm not like sitting in front of somebody, but you just get more and more used to it. And I just try to flow as naturally as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. So in 2008, when you made that big transition, that's what a lot of the listeners are looking for because they may be stuck in a nine to five. They may be comfortable. And you know, being comfort comfortable is okay, but it's also gonna kill any ambition and growth. You have to be uncomfortable.